right. Here we go. All right, we're back on. The whole computer crashed. So that's what that was. And I'm, I'm officially getting ready to switch my whole computer over to a Linux system. Because Windows is a horrible hot mess that I, I wouldn't wish on anybody. I mean, Windows is horribly terrible. So... Windows is a sad operating system. Yes. But yeah, what happened? The whole computer crashed. And it's the, the bad part. Oh. Okay, there we go. Yeah, the bad, the, the, the messed up part about it is I just got this computer. You know what I'm saying? And it's messing up like that. Thing is terrible. Terrible. All right. Just bear with me. We'll, we'll work through it. Technical difficulty. I learned my lesson, though. That, that'll never happen again. I hadn't started sharing it and all that. I'm going to get Yousef uh, back in here. Yeah, the, the uh, computer crashed. That's like the third time I'm done with uh, Windows, man. I'm a, uh, This weekend or whatever, I'm upgrading this thing to Linux. And I'm, I'm not messing with... Uh, I'm not messing with Windows, man. I mean, Windows has really went down the drain. I could do a whole show on how pathetic Windows is. All right, so just bear with me. Yeah. Yeah, y'all, the, the computer, uh, the computer crashed, Windows, and the bat, and and it's a brand new computer for the most part, and it's supposed to be a fast, powerful one or whatever, you know. Right. I'm pretty, I'm pretty intense on. Uh, on computers and stuff though i do it like even my phone i got a real i got a decent phone but even it's it's running slow on me that and you figure i'm probably under attack also so you know all right i got yousef i'm getting ready to send you another link just uh bear with me here i'm sending it to you right now bam all right Okay, so I sent you a I sent you a link. Uh, there, Yusef, you could come back in. 
so late. He's asking me for the. Nah, you you should be able to come right in with that, man. Try it again. I, oh, worst case, I'll send you another one. Yeah. Man, I'll send you another one. Don't worry, we, we'll get you in there. We'll try it again. Alright, try that one. Just getting you, uh, you, brother Yusuf back in there. Yosef. There you go. All right, you back in there. Cool. Yeah, the computer crashed, man. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and it's supposed to be like a new, a new super good, powerful computer, but... It's win but it's Windows. I hear Windows is getting like a ton of complaints of because their stuff is pathetic. Yeah, Windows 10, I don't really like it either. I'm I'm gonna switch over to Linux because it's stable and it's simple, you know. Uh, I'm fed up. That's like the third time it's crashed like that on me. Um, but n never in the middle of a show, you know. It's all good, though. We good. We good. We got everything up and running. Even my phone's running super slow. So it's just everything's awesome today. Yeah. You know what? Usually when I, um, when I do my classes, I always have technology problems. Yep. I can't send an email. <laughs> my phone shut off on me. Can't wait for this empire to come to an end. Then I could just use back to simple technology. This crap is overrated. So y'all, y'all bear with me. Um, if y'all just tuning in, the computer crash. Um, Are we live right now for us? Hmm? Are we live right now? Or... Oh, yeah, yeah. You're not you're not on yet, but... Okay. I'm just getting everything set up on my end. <laughs> Boy, this is, this is just funny, man. How terrible this stuff is. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, all right, shalom, y'all. Y'all, I appreciate y'all being patient with me on Facebook and all that. Yeah, I'm gonna switch some things or I did. I'm gonna make some changes here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you gotta do that. Yep, with me, technology got one chance. It's, it start messing up, then we gotta do some mm -hmm. a, a technology audit. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, Shalom, Sister Lisa. Yeah, th this technology over here acting crazy. Tag on computer decided it wanted to take a quick nap and just blacked out on me. You know, like it couldn't handle it. Uh, anyway, yeah, just bear with me. Yep, enjoy the song. I'll start over. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna share this and then we'll get started. Oh, it's back. Oh, it's back. If you come against the scriptures, man, we gonna rise up. If you come against our heritage, we gonna rise up. It don't matter if I get it, man, we gonna rise up, rise up. We rise up. If you come against the king, man, we gonna rise. Still living, got real with them prophecies. Uh -oh. Every time we done pass go, monopolize the monopoly. Woo. You give us 200, take 300, charge us for the property. Y'all yeah. Yeah, gave That's us a sick uh, To be honest, got it honestly. Uh, which means we are joint heirs. <coughs> Somebody's twins on a trampoline. We speak what he wrote. Then every time I pull speech, this Michelle's out, notes. Damn. Israel hit the ground running like it a preacher because we got hope. Yeah. Hold 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 yes, you is the Messiah. Yes, the Messiah. It's his will over our will, so we call that student driver. Student. He calls us his song. Sorry, Mariah. Sorry, Mariah. Mariah. carry these notes. Address it. All outsiders, we will if rise. If you come against the scriptures, man, we gon' rise up. If you come against our heritage, we gon' rise up. It don't matter if I get it, man, we gon' rise up, rise up. We rise up. If you come against the king, man, we gon' rise up. If you come against our Elohim, we gon' rise up. It don't matter, anybody get it, man. We gon' rise up, we rise up. Yeah. Rise up. Uh huh. And rise up. Rise up in the morning. See my people in poverty. Crying out to my people. Yeah. They asking me why you bother me. Slaves, we living in colonies. Walking like zombies who bread with the batteries. Even preacher man and creature man. Down low with them sodomies. And no, it isn't an oddity. Rather the norm, so check the academy. Shalom, y'all. Shalom, shalom. It's Michael Israel here. And you're watching Spiritual Combat. And um, today we have a brother, uh, he's a Paleo Hebrew teacher, El Youssef. And he's here, he's, he's uh, getting his getting everything ready. Um, and we're going to get started here in a sec. But yeah, my, my dad going computer crashed on me. You know, it's like you can't make this up. And, and it ain't an old computer, you know. And it's supposed to be top of the line. But because it has uh, windows on it, and windows is like, apparently Windows 10 is so horrible, it's just disastrous. But uh, if you do, they, they, they you know, because they have all these programs running in the background, stealing all your information and uploading it to the internet. So that's consuming the, mo the majority of your resources. So you you try to do some work on the computer and it'll crash. So anyway, I'm not gonna goose rabbi. I'm gonna stay calm today. You know what I'm saying? I got everything up and going. I see a lot of y'all and tuned in. Um, Shalom uh, Torrance, Shalom Danica, Shalom Shalom J Loss, Mister Tibron. Azar, Azaria Malaka, I think I got that right, bloodline, bloodline of the House of David, Shalom, uh, Shalom Joyce, of course, Shalom Sister Lisa, 12 Tribes Media, Shalom, um, and to my Facebook friends, 
Shalom Tracy, Shalom Steve Morris, Shalom Darius, Shalom Dana, of course, Shalom to my sister Hicks, Shalom Yar Yarmi Yahoo, Shalom, good to see all y'all in here. We have a brother, he's been on my show before. Um, he is a paleo Hebrew teacher. And before the show, I just asked him, hey, make sure you break that all the way down um, for the viewers. Because I know some of y'all don't understand the significance of what he's teaching and all that. But um, I'm going I'm to hand it over to him. Uh, Shalom El Youssef. It's good to have you on the show. Okay, there we go. I had your mic turned down. I'm sorry about that. Go, uh, okay. sh go ahead and say shalom to everybody again. Shalom, Mike. Shalom, everybody. Thanks for having me on again. And to those people who maybe haven't uh, heard of you before, haven't seen you before, um, or might not be familiar with the Paleo Hebrew and all that, can uh, go ahead and just explain um, exactly what you're teaching, if you okay. could. Okay, I'll do that. So the, the uh, ancient Phoenician Paleo Hebrew, that's the language that the Most High uh, spoke when he spoke all things into existence. So when we go into the book of uh, Genesis, if anybody has their Bible with them, I can show you, show everybody a few scriptures just so you, I can orient you to what I'm talking about. If you look at chapter one, <clears throat> In the book of Genesis, you see uh, a series of verses where it says, okay, so Genesis chapter one, let's say verse three, it said, and God said, and then it goes on to say, let there be light, right? And then if you look at verse six, it says, and God said, right, let there be a firmament, et cetera. And it goes on, verse nine, uh, at verse 11, and God said, it goes on, right? So God said that in a language, or the Most High said that in a language, and that language is what we call Ibriyaf, okay? Ibriyaf is the ancient Phoenician Paleo-Hebrew, okay? So to go further on that, you look in the book of Jubilees, chapter 12, verse, I think it's verse 24, uh, what you're going to find is the scripture, and I'm going to see if yeah, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it to you here. Okay. Jubilee chapter 12, verse 24 through 27. Okay. And it says, And I will be a God to thee, that's talking about Abraham, and thy son, and to thy son's son, and to all thy seed. Fear not, for from henceforth and into all generations of the earth I am thy God. And the Lord God said, just talking about Abraham, our ancestor. Open his mouth and his ears that he may hear and speak with his mouth with the language which has been revealed. For it has ceased from the mouths of all the children of men from the day of the overthrow. And it's talking about Babylon. So what that's saying is that at one time, the whole earth spoke Ibriath or the ancient Phoenician Paleo-Hebrew. This was the language that the Most High spoke everything into existence and that he gave to Adam. And of course, Adam's offspring all spoke the same language uh, until we got to the Tower of Babel, okay? And continuing from verse 26, it says, and I opened his mouth, it's talking about Abraham, and his ears and his lips, and I began to speak with him in the ivory ass tongue. Now in your Bible, it will probably say Ivory or Hebrew. Hebrew is a modern Hebrew uh, uh, word. Hebrew is the English word, okay? So that word Hebrew is a corruption of Eber because the uh, Greeks or the Westerners, they weren't, they, they weren't able to pronounce Eber. So they started calling it uh, Hebrew, okay? Um, real, uh, real fast. Um... For those that I see, uh, there's already one question in there. If y'all have any questions for him, go ahead and ask um, for sure. So I, I didn't put that out there, but go ahead and if you got any questions, put them in the comments and I'll def I'll ask them because I'm watching all the I'm watching all the comments. Um, 
Uh, a sister had a question. She said, uh, Brother Youssef, I have been trying to find joy, the female version in the original Hebrew. I found o Oshra in the modern. What is it in the original? You know, you know what she's talking about? No, I'm going to check for her now, though. Okay. Because with the, with the uh, modern Hebrew, you have to work backwards. So let me see if I can find what she, I can check. This is one of the things I teach in my class. I teach you how to use the different tools. So when I say tools, I'm talking about uh, lexicons, which are, which are dictionaries, um, Bible dictionaries, encyclopedias, and things like that. Okay. So now I'm going to look. I have a I have a modern I have a uh, a modern and the, the reason why I, I need to teach people how to do this is because if you don't know the alphabet you won't be able to uh, you won't be able to look the words up so you need to know the alphabet in order to look the words up okay all right so and it, it's a bit kind of complicated. Um, H -I -J. So let me just look in here. Okay. So I'm looking in in, uh, in a lexicon right now. So let me see if I can go to the page where it says, and it'll have, it'll have the modern and the uh, Phoenician. Okay? okay. So this is what we do in the class. And Shalom, Shalom, Brother Morris, Shalom, my man, Sean. Hey, Sean, I'm going to hit you up tomorrow because I know I, I, you know, I know we were supposed to do, uh, I got, you know, you're supposed to come on and I will set that up. I've just been super duper busy. <laughs> but okay. yes, uh, Shalom to all y'all in there. So, Tim, so, okay. Uh, all right, so the word is uh, na, na, la, which is different from the modern, okay? So when we deal with the, uh, with the ancient, there's a lot of differences here. So ancient, the, the ancient Phoenician Paleo-Hebrew, every word has an action. So you have to identify the action of the word, okay? You have to identify the concrete meaning of the word and then the abstract meaning of the word, and then the cultural context. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> and when you, when you look at the cultural context, you're going to have to do, in a lot of cases, a Hebrew word study, which would be you, you'll look at each individual pictograph. A pictograph is a letter. So, and then that's how we come up with a word. So these words, they are based on a root system, okay? And then that root system, is a two, well, if you look at the modern, it's gonna be a three letter word. That's like the mother of all words. All the other words are derived from that. But from a, uh, from our language, it goes back to a two, a two pictograph root word. Y'all, does everybody follow me on that? And then there are words that are made off of that two pictograph word. So I'm going to give you guys an example of it. Okay. I just got, I lost my place with the word. Okay. That's fine. Like, like I said earlier, if y'all have any questions for them, go ahead and put them in the comments. I'm, I'm uh, keeping an eye on the comments. So she said that she, we, we're looking up joy. I lost my, I lost my, I lost my finger where I was at. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So let me go back to that. So this would be a, a parent root, what we call a parent root, which is a two a two letter uh, a two letter pictograph. So one three, and I'm trying to look it up here, okay, just so I can give you guys a good example of what of what we're dealing with. One, three. 
Yeah, shalom, shalom, brother Brandon. Good to see you in there. One three three seven. One three three seven. Jay. One three three seven. And the questions are lining hey, up. So joy. <laughs> so joy is. I'm sorry, I gave her the wrong word. I, I looked at the wrong place. It's shawasha. Okay. The action is to turn. The concrete is horse, and the abstract is joy. Y'all see that? So it's completely different than what probably everybody had in mind. Okay. So let's see if, if I could. I'm gonna. Can, can y'all see that? Mike, can, uh, you see, can you see that on the screen? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a point to it. Point to it. O A G. So these are these are the tools. These are the tools that you're going to have to learn how to use so that you can get all of that information, because these these nuances in the word uh, are important in translating and understanding the, the meaning of, of when you see joy in different parts or different verses of the Bible. So, for example, uh, in this one instance, joy is translated as re rejoice. So we see that it's going to mean to turn around in joy. Okay, to turn around and joy. Okay. So okay, horse. If it's going to mean horse, remember it said that that was that was a concrete horse. It means from it's turning around in play. So the horse is turning around in play. So this might sound strange to a lot of people, right? Because that's not what we think about joy. Okay. But in order to understand what the Phoenician Hebrew is saying, you have to be able to know what the concrete is versus the abstract. Okay, so let me come back to that. Let me finish. Is that confusing or? No, I think they, because they, uh, they, they had some other questions. Um, they they want to know how did the last class go? So if you want to answer that. Well, the, the last class is still going and this is the kind of stuff we're, we're doing right now. We're translating. Okay. So we're, we're, we're at the point now where everybody has translated the Ten Commandments. Uh, They've done their initial translation, and now we're doing the refining of the translation. Okay. So these nuances of, of how words are, uh, their meaning in the, in the uh, Phoenician Hebrew, you have to know this stuff. And it, it takes practice and use in order to remember all of this stuff. When I sit down and do my stuff, I have all my books, you know. I sit down with, with, with my books and I, I work through it. Um, one of the disadvantages that we have is that nobody speaks the language, right? So if you're not speaking it every day, it's very difficult to remember every word because you're not using it every day. So one of my goals with this class is to get people literate so that we all have somebody to talk to, right? So and when you're talking, you can you can begin to talk and it moves you from the paper and the pencil to a conversation um what and and if you could to the people who who might be real new to this yeah break down the difference between the hebrew that they speak in israel now and okay. then the ancient hebrew and then the paleo hebrew Okay, so yeah, let me let me let me go through through that right now. So the the uh, the features of Hebrew is this that the, the most important concept you have to understand when you when you learn this is that everything is concrete in Hebrew and everything has action. So the question is, what does concrete mean, right? So concrete means anything that you can experience or express through your senses. So we have the sense of smell, taste, touch, sight, and hearing. So there are five, right? So <clears throat> our ancestors expressed everything based upon what they could sense or express through their feelings. This is called reality. <clears throat> now, the, the Greeks, uh, they express their world or their paradigm through what they experience in their mind. 
So things that we experience in our mind would be like, uh, let's say, they, when they say we praise, they'll say praise, right? That, that they praise. Well, that's something that they do in their mind. But when a Hebrew says praise, that's something that we actually do for us. Praising, when you break that word down, it means keeping the commandments mm. and looking to the most high for direction through our walk through life. Wow. Right. When you break that down. So it's, it's action and it's keeping the commandments. So it's two, two separate paradigms. So that's the first thing. That's why when we talked about a horse with joy, you can actually see a horse, right? And you can see him turning around in circles when he's playing. So that, that's, that's the relationship between joy and a horse when we looked at the Hebrew word uh, shawasha. Okay. You follow me? So now the other important point <clears throat> that you have to keep in mind when you deal with the uh, Hebrew, um, there are three different eras of time. So we're talking eras of time. So when you look at the 911 book, for example, I'm going to give you guys, let me find a book. I'm going to show you what I mean. So when you look at the 911, let's say you look at the very first pictograph. Let me put it and, to the camera. And, and, uh, you, you, Yusef, real fast, for the, because there's people in here who haven't seen you before. It, okay. Tell them what that book is. Ah, okay. Um, the 911 Ivory Ath Rescue. Ancient Phoenix, let me let me show you the title. 911 uh rescue. I'm sorry, 911 Ivory App Rescue, Ancient Phoenician Paleo Hebrew. This book is going to teach you the basics of what you need to know uh, to get started learning the language. So this is the, actually the textbook for the course. So when you look inside the book, <clears throat> what you're gonna see, I say that this is the first, the first letter, okay. This is the ah. So you'll see this is a bull's head, right? So this is the first iteration, the first writing of the script, okay? This looks like a, a A turned over to the side, okay? So, so going from here to here was a passage of time, and the people started to write the, the pictographs differently. A pictograph, is on, it only means a letter, okay? But it's a picture. So it's an ox right and then they started to write it differently it looks like the letter a so now this was about plus 3200 years ago when it looked like that mm. okay this is uh, about 2500 years to 3200 years ago right so this is the oldest this is the youngest so this is the ancient sometimes called early this is the paleo some call sometimes called middle. Everybody follow that? This character over here is the Aramaic. This came into existence during Babylonian captivity. Mm. Right? So, so this character right here is, is actually not ours. Some people say Daniel has something to do with this, but you know, I, that's speculation. I don't know. But this character right here is where the modern Hebrew evolved from. So this is where your where your square characters come from, you know the the, the modern Hebrew characters they evolve from this one, which means they have nothing to do with with these. Wow. So this would be all the languages that were uh, being written prior to the Tower of Babel. This first ancient one. Okay. So so the Paleo. Now, this is my opinion, mm -hmm. okay? The paleo is what we wrote uh, or what our ancestors wrote their manuscripts in, the paleo, right? But there are some uh, linguists who they'll write, like, they'll, they'll write a Torah or a book in the Torah. They'll write it with the ancient. Some will also write it with the, uh, with the um, paleo, okay? So there's a lot of leeway uh, for translators to do what you're going to do that i mean that's what's so nice about it because once you learn these skills that, that i'm teaching in the course uh you really liberate it to really do your own thing especially once you learn how to do all the tools so i, I show a picture an illustration now this book comes in black and white and color uh so i show a picture 
to show you what this pictograph means. So this is an ox. So here you'll see a picture of an ox, okay? And then there are writing exercises and things like that. Uh, they're, they're, this has a lot of information. For those people who just, they only wanna learn some vocabulary and they don't wanna become literate, there's 770 uh, vocabulary words in here. It's like uh, 90 something exercises. There's a lot of stuff you can learn in this book. Um, but the course, the course is about teaching people, people to become literate so that you can read the scriptures uh, and you can translate and you can transliterate. That's what the course is about. And also speaking. So you're gonna learn how to use all of the, uh, like for example, everybody's heard of the Brown Driver Briggs, right? But most people don't know how to use it. <laughs> because if you buy it and you open it up, it's very intimidating, right? So you, you need to, people need to be taught how to use this because a lot of us have it in our library, but we don't use it. And I've just one more thing before we move on. Like everybody's heard about the Strongs, right? But how many people knew that the Strongs has limitations, serious limitations? And not every word in the Bible is in the Strongs. Mm. Most people didn't know that, right? So I teach you how to use Strongs. And for those words that are not in the Bible, I'm going to teach you the limitations of Strongs, right? What you can use it for and what you can't use it for. And you're going to find people who are using it for things that the Strongs, uh, the, for uses that Strongs is not meant to. So you can, you can spot uh, errors in their teaching. Not, not to call, not, you know, not to, not to point out their errors, but just for yourself so that you know, right? And then I teach you what, what lexicons you're going to need. I'm just, just kind of giving you guys a survey. Uh, and somebody, uh, somebody mm -hmm. asks, are there different, are, are there other Hebrew dialects? Well, yeah. Um, well, that, that's the interesting thing, right? There's uh, a Hebrew dialect in, in, uh, African countries. So our brothers over in Africa, uh, depending on their tribes, they're all going to have their own dialects, those who have a preserved version of the language, right? But also in other places, in other, in other uh, nations of the world where they're Israelites, be they from the 10 tribe, from the, from the North or the South Kingdom, if they still have their language, they're, they're going to have their own dialect, right? Right. If the language has been preserved, but see, we don't we don't know that yet. But I do know that uh, some of the African nations, those brothers over there, still have a preserved version of the of the of their of their Hebrew dialect. Mm -hmm. But there are many dialects, just like there are many dialects of English. You know, so I guess the important thing to point out about that is that there's no there's no wrong dialect. Like you can't say somebody's dialect is right and somebody else's is wrong because it's a dialect, right? Which means it's just a variation from, from, from like for example, British English is different from American English. American English is different from the English that I speak every day, right? The English I speak every day is different from the English that they speak down in Mississippi or Alabama or Florida. So actually we go through that. We go through, um, uh, something called idioms, which is the other important point uh, uh, about studying the language. You really have to know the idioms that our ancestors spoke. So what is an idiom? An idiom is a fancy way of saying slang, right? So for example, uh, if, if, if I say, um, that's hot, right? If I say, wow, that's hot. So a person who doesn't know my dialect they're gonna think I'm talking about the temperature is hot, right? But a person who comes from my culture, they're gonna know that when I say that's hot, I'm, I'm saying that, wow, that's really, really nice, right? So a lot of the, uh, what we call parables and you know other types of stories in the Bible, they're actually idioms. So the question becomes is, how do you find out the meaning of the idiom, right? Well, there are certain tools you can use to find out the culture. And that culture will reveal to you the meaning of the idiom. So I also teach that in the course. I, I, I'll show you what those tools are. 
so that you'll be able to to go out if you want. I mean, I even I I, I even give away free free copies, free uh, digital copies of the tools when you come into the course. So okay, yeah, and um. So uh, go ahead and tell them um, about the course and the book and the price because people are asking what's the cost and the websites and all that. Okay, so the uh, this is the the, the, the textbook. Uh, it comes in black and white. Um, other than that, other than the color inside, the books are the same. The, the color is more beautiful, more interesting uh, for children. If you you know if you want to get children, but this book is for adults. Right, the children can use it. Uh, it's very simply written, um, but if you get the black and white or the color, it doesn't matter. Everything inside is the same. The color, I think, is like thirty thirty three dollars. I don't know if you can show it on the web. I don't remember the exact amount, but it's like thirty three dollars. And then the um, the black and white, I think, is twenty four. What, what's the website? Uh, uh, w e g o t nex dot com backslash products. So we got next. There's no T. We got next without the T dot com backslash products. Okay. That'll tell you where you can go get the book. So it has 770 vocabulary words. 80 of the words have phonics. 73 uh, vocabulary word questions. 66 handwriting exercises in this book right here. So this is our course textbook. And the online course is live. It's a live course. There's no tuition, so it's free. But I do ask everybody to who can afford it. I ask everybody who can afford it to get the book um, for obvious reasons, right? If you're going to teach a class, you have to have a book. But if you, if you, if you truly can't afford the book, you can still take the class. Okay. But, and, but I, um, I still have, mm -hmm. and then I see you have some pet. It looks like some kids' books there too, huh? Oh yeah, that's the mixed Hebrew. That's the mixed Hebrew. There's a role for the mixed Hebrew. Uh, when I say mixed Hebrew, that means it's our language plus the Arabic. Okay. okay. If it's if if if, if it's uh, I'm sorry, Aramaic. If it's modern, it's just modern. So the one with the children's faces, it's going to have like vowels and, and uh, the B sound and all of that stuff because it's mixed. Uh, but the Phoenician Hebrew has no vowels. Okay. That's the other important element. Phoenician Hebrew, our language has no vowels. Okay. So I'll give you an example of that. I'll give you an example. So if you look on page eight of the book, right, you'll see the letter ah, which is the ox head. Okay, it's ah. That's a consonant. These are all consonants. If you look on page 10, it's going to give you the ba, right? The ba, the letter ba. It's a tenth, tenth floor plan, right? It's ba. And you if you go on and on, all the letters in, not all, but the vast majority end in the in in the in the ah sound. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, and, and uh, we don't have E, O, and all of that. All, all the vowels, everybody knows what vowels are. We don't have that in the Phoenician Hebrew. But I take you through that step by step meticulously. And okay. I explain, also, I explain uh, the modern Hebrew because they use vowels, right? I explain that whole thing to you. Um, and then toward the end of the class, I provide you with the modern Hebrew alphabet, but I don't do that until the end of the class. Okay, all right. But you need you need the modern Hebrew alphabet in order to be able to use all of these tools. Okay. Because they're all written, all the words are in modern Hebrew. And and uh, uh, for you who, who just asked, it, it's we got next, just the way it's spelled here, dot com. And next is N E X um, dot yeah. com. Okay. And that's where they also go to register, right? 
yeah, info, info at we got next, and then I'll send them over a link. Well, let me, you know what, let me, let me, let me try to go to do that right now. I'll get you the link to register for the class right now. Okay. You guys. Is my screen it? showing? What was that? Is my screen showing? Yeah, yeah. No. My screen showing right now? Or no? I don't want it to show because I'm in my, okay, let me, okay, I'm in Zoom now. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna uh is is it on your website it says learn paleo on no it's not on my website I, I I should put it on my website oh you're talking about the zoom course I have a link here I don't yeah. know if it's an old one yeah um, that that was old Mike let me let me give you this one I'm about to put it in the chat okay okay that's it right there that's for November 11th the new class all right, let me get, let me see. Yeah. Well, can I go back to the, uh, to the uh, presentation before we started the questions? Or are we going to move on? Uh, okay, so I don't really know what they can see with this, but oh, there's okay. the information up there. Okay, yeah, you can press on with uh, whatever you're doing. Okay, so we, we we stopped at Jubilees twelve. I, I just want people to know that. Go ahead, go ahead and fix your camera. Oh, okay. There so you go. That was that. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just want people to to know that uh, this is uh, the language, right? So going back to Jubilees twelve, chapter twenty four, verse twenty seven. Uh, going, we stopped at verse twenty six, and it says, "I opened his mouth, talking about Abraham, and his ears and his lips." I began to speak with him in the Hebrew, the tongue of creation. So some scripture, some translators will put the modern Hebrew meaning, which is uh, Ivri, right? They'll put Ivri, but this is the Hebrew, okay? So this is the tongue of creation. Then verse 27 is a very interesting part. It says, and he, meaning uh, Abraham, took the books of his fathers. Abraham took the books of his fathers. And these were written in Hebrew, okay? So we was, in our language, it's Ibriah. And he transcribed them. So Moses rewrote them. He transcribed them, right? And he began from henceforth to study them. So he studied them in the, in the language that he transcribed them in, the ancient Phoenician Hebrew, the Ibriah, okay? And I made known to him that which he could not understand, and he studied them. So the Most High made known to him that which Moses, uh, which which Abraham couldn't understand. So we can also uh, expect that the Most High is going to do that for us too, because we're turning back to Torah more completely by learning the language of creation. So we can express we can expect a blessing from this, the same as Abraham was blessed. Okay. So kind of the point of reading through all of that. Okay. Um. We talked about the errors of creation. So the way the way we got to the modern Hebrew was with the Masoretes. So actually our ancestors back during Babylonian times, they're the ones who corrupted the, the, the language. It was them who corrupted it. Uh, during the Babylonian times, they added vowels, right? But the vowels were still ancient Phoenician Paleo-Hebrew pictographs, okay? Over time, between the 6th and the 9th century AD, the, uh, the Masoretes went and added the, what we see, the modern block Hebrew text, right, script rather, and they added the vowels. They changed the way the vowels look, too. So that's like the evolution of the changes that were made. So when you think about the modern Hebrew, there's no Hebrew in it at all. First of all, they're speaking Yiddish, right? Which is a combination of different languages like German, uh, English, uh, Slavic, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, a little bit of Hebrew and Aramaic. That's what the Yiddish is, okay? So that's something completely different than the ancient Phoenician Paleo-Hebrew. So when you look in Strong's, so when you look in Strong's, going back to Strong's, Right, what you're gonna see is modern Hebrew. 
and you're going to see abstract meanings of words, which is not the concrete Paleo Hebrew that our ancestors spoke. Does everybody kind of see what I'm saying? So, so the skill I'm teaching in the class is how to go from the abstract Greek words, how to go back or translate them back to the concrete Paleo Hebrew words that are written on the original manuscripts. You see what I'm saying, Mike? So I'm teaching how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. That it's a skill. It's, it's, it's a skill. Yeah. Um, so so for those of y'all interested, it looks like a lot of y'all definitely uh, register, you know, for his class. Um, we can put the information up there and uh, you can go to his website. You know, you, all right, I'll put that up there again. Um, uh, can I say one more thing, Mike? Yep, go ahead. There's also, there's also a tool you can use that does have, it does have every word in the Bible. And I bet you 99 out of 100 people don't know what that tool is. <laughs> but in the class, I'm going to, I'm going to teach everybody that, and I'm going to give it to you. It has every word in the, every, but of course it's in the modern Hebrew, right? So uh, but I'm still going to give it because you're going to learn how to translate from modern back to paleo. Okay. okay. I'm teaching that. So that's the, that's the value of it, right? I'm going to show you which one. I'm not even going to show you, but I'm going to give you a copy. I'm going to give you a, 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 a PDF copy of, of this tool that has every word in the Bible. Okay. All you got to do is look it up. Awesome. All you got to do is look it up. And I'm going to teach you how to do it. The, the, the interesting thing about this tool, though, see, they slick about it. Because unless you know the alphabet, Mike, you can't use it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's going to look like a whole bunch of nothing on the pages. So you got to, you got to know the alphabet just to be able to look a word up. And then once you're, once you're able to look a word up, now you have to know how to use the tool in order to find the word that you want. So they really hid it. They, 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 they made it sort of common people can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good so there y'all go um a lot of good information came out brother l yusuf uh i appreciate you coming on the show like i said anytime you want to come on definitely uh reach out to me um, can I get, mike can i give one example of a um concrete uh absolutely example in the scriptures so that so that it's, it's uh clear to people um, let's look at uh, Psalms 1, verse 3. You got a Bible with you nearby? Or do I, let me see if I can find mine. Where's mine? Let me see. Let me look this up. Okay. Oh, okay. So Psalms 1, verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So the question when we look, when we examine a scripture, we say, well, we say, well, is there anything that you can experience with your senses in the in the verse, right? So I see tree, for example, I see a banana tree or, or apple tree, right? So that's concrete because we can see it, experience it with our senses, right? Or I can taste the banana, I can taste the, 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 the apple. That's another sense, right? So, so that's also, um, it's concrete, right? Because we can experience it with the senses. So let's say the leaf, right? It used the word leaf. <clears throat> it used the word tree, fruit, and leaf. So of course you can touch a leaf, you can see a leaf, right? So that's concrete. So our ancestors would use those types of words to describe things, right? That's how we describe things based upon what we see, feel, touch, taste, and hear. Now, an example of abstract thought would be at Psalms 103 verse eight, and it reads, so this is where we will compare and contrast, okay? So Psalms 103 verse eight, the Lord is compassionate and gracious slow to anger, 
abounding in love. So we, we can't see compassion. We can't taste compassion. We can't hear compassion, right? We can't smell it and we can't touch compassion, right? Compassion is something you experience in your mind. Gracious is also something you only experience in your mind. You can't see it, you can't taste it, you can't touch it, you can't hear it, you can't feel it, right? And then we see uh, love is also something we experience in our, in our mind, right? Uh, so these are examples of abstract things. So what we do is learn how to find the concrete meaning in those scriptures. You see what I'm saying? There's a, there's a way to do it. There's a way to do it. And there's also lexicons like the one I shared with you guys at the outset when we looked up joy. It gives you the action meaning. It gives you the concrete meaning. It gives you the abstract meaning. It gives you the cultural context, et cetera. It also gives you the, 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 the words that are derived or associated with that word. So, but these are these are the tools that I that I'm going to introduce you to and give you free copies of. Okay. Right. So, the the last point about it is that the question is why would the why would the Greeks translate translate our ancestors' words out of the concrete and into abstract? Because for them, concrete makes no sense. <laughs> When, when, when they look at the literal concrete meaning or those verses, it makes absolutely no sense to them. So that's why they had to translate it into the abstract. Right. You see what I mean? That's yeah. why there's such a big difference between Jacob and Esau. Right. Because we deal with reality, what we see and experience with our senses, and they deal with things that they experience and make up in their minds. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you look at the scripture, I forgot the verse about, about uh, Esau and Jacob. I don't remember the exact, uh, about there are two manner of people. I can't remember the, mm -hmm. the verse. But you know what I'm talking about? Two manner of, two manner yeah, of nations. in your womb, yep. Yeah. yeah. That's one aspect of it, a different way of thinking about it, right? We see things and experience things through, through our senses, right? And we deal in reality. They're dealing with things in their mind, what they think and what they feel. Okay. Yeah. So two manner of people. We're very different in, in that way. So and then and then I always say that that's one reason why Esau likes to lie a lot, right? Because you can think of anything, you know, and you can hurt people too. And you can always justify it because you come up with all of these things in your mind. But it's a whole other thing when you can feel another person's pain, right? It's, it's, it's hard to hurt them if you, if you have that empathy and pain for them. But Esau is not dealing with reality. Uh, different, different, different way of, uh, of dealing. All so right. I just want to kind of make that point. Okay. So like I said, y'all, uh, I'm Michael Israel. You watching Spiritual Combat. Brother L. Youssef, make sure you check out his course um appreciate y'all tuning in and definitely check him out register for the course is he he's a paleo hebrew teacher and uh with that said i'm gonna wrap this up so shalom y'all shalom everybody shalom <laughs>